This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You are your greatest asset. It's time you started investing in that. Visit betterhelp.com slash super and take care of you. Hey, brother. All right, guys. So there is one scene in Moana that has always really stood out to me, and it's this one right here. This, this is just a rock. Also this one and this one and this one. Man, this movie's good. But seriously, let's take a chill pill there, okay, chief? That works on like a few levels because he actually is the chief. Although maybe I need to calm down because asking him to calm down is maybe me failing to recognize the trauma that lies beneath. Hmm. But what I mean is, is that as far as we know in this moment, it's the first time Chief Tui has ever seen the heart of Tafiti. And from where we're sitting, it looks like it should be the explanation to him for why his daughter is acting so weird all of a sudden. And thus far into the movie, he has seemed like a really caring parent. I mean, even in this moment, he's, in a way, being really caring, but like, he doesn't even give it a moment's consideration. What gives, Chief Tui? What gives? Like, I mean, even if you think it's insignificant, I mean, at the very least, it's still a pretty cool looking rock. But no, he dismisses it immediately. And do you know why? Because the man has no taste for cool looking rocks, that's why. I'm just kidding, look at this guy's tattoos. He has awesome taste. But no, he doesn't need to inspect it because he already knows exactly what it is and what Moana thinks it is. And he knows it because this is not the first time he has seen the heart of Tafiti. In fact, I think he has already gone through exactly what Moana is going through. It kind of feels similar to your parents not being entirely sympathetic over your very first heartbreak. <laughs> My life is over. Over. Like, yes, for you, it is obviously incredibly painful in the moment, but from their perspective, like, they're like, yeah, you weren't gonna end up with that person anyway, so. But in my case, the joke's on them because I married my prom date and now we have three kids, so who's laughing now, mom? Actually, I'm just kidding. Everyone loved Beth from the beginning. It's true. Anyway, getting back on track, the point is that from his perspective, he got lulled into the same thing he sees Moana getting lulled into right now, but ultimately he discovered that it was a fool's errand. And now he doesn't want Moana wasting any extra time or energy pursuing this idea. But the question is, how does he already know this? How does he already know what the heart of Tafiti looks like? And the answer is that before that fateful day on the beach when the ocean chose Moana, it chose her father first. No one goes beyond the reef. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Stamps.com. Look guys, being a YouTube channel means that it is crucial that we have all the extra time we need to overanalyze all of the books and movies and TV shows that we love. Every second we have to hunt down Easter eggs matters, which means we don't have time to make repeated trips to the post office. Which is why we love Stamps.com, because it saves us money, time, and stress, and gives us access to all the post office and UPS services we need right from our office. Stamps.com even has discounts that aren't available anywhere else. Like you can get up to 40% off USPS and up to 76% off some UPS rates. Like seriously, no matter what size your operation is, Stamps.com will make your life easier. So save time today and stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com. And if you sign up with the promo code SUPERCARLIN, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts are required at all. Just head over to Stamps.com and click on the microphone in the upper right hand side of the page and enter promo code SUPERCARLIN. One more time, stamps.com, promo code SUPERCARLIN. Link is in the description down below. All right, so at the start of the movie, we see little baby Moana get chosen by the ocean after she helps a little sea turtle cross the beach. It's super adorable. She obviously does the right thing, but I do not think that this whole situation is mere happenstance. Like, I don't think the ocean just casually observed this little girl helping the sea turtle and was like, hey, let's put the fate of the entire world in that little infant's hands. Instead, I think the ocean was very purposefully testing Moana here, trying to see if she had what it takes. And there's actually a couple of clues in this scene that tell us that unbeknownst to Moana, she is actually taking part in some kind of trial. The first clue is there's actually two options for Moana. Moana here. Either take the conch shell down by the ocean or go help the sea turtle. Temptation versus selflessness. The shell is right at the oncoming tide's edge and there is no doubt that if she abandons it, it is definitely going to get whisked away into the ocean. And I don't know if you were paying attention or not, but it is a really, really cool shell, like gift shop quality. And just right there on the beach, free for the taking. I mean, that 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 is a real find. If you've ever been looking for seashells, like this is what you're hoping for. Instead, I always think I've seen one, but then you pick it about its sand, half of it's missing, and you're like, oh. But maybe one day I'll be a conch hero. Maybe one day I'll bring home the big shell and be treated to that glorious pork dinner. Mm. 
That's good pork. On the other hand, there's also no doubt that if she takes the shell, that turtle be bird food. I mean, it is a true moral dilemma. On the one hand, you have lifelong shell admiration from friends and family. And on the other hand, you have like fleeting admiration from a little baby sea turtle who's gonna go into the ocean and then never come back. Or, well, I guess he will eventually come back because sea turtles come back to the beach that they were born on to lay their eggs. So I don't know how they do it. It's really cool. I think you get what I mean though. All right, anyway, I feel like I've lost my path, but you know what? That's okay because every path I make, every road leads back to the place I know where I cannot go, where I long to be. It's the ocean, full circle. All right, so you know what's odd about that baby turtle though? It's the only baby turtle there. Like, I'm not sure if you've ever seen baby turtles hatch from their shells and then try and make their way to the ocean, but if you have it, let me tell you, it's more of a group event, like a mass race to the ocean. And yet, this little turtle is alone. Why? Because it's not an ordinary turtle. It's a test. The ocean is testing this young, innocent child to see what choice they will make. And of course, Moana passes with flying colors. And the proof that the ocean is involved ahead of time is right here on the turtle's shell. Look familiar? Well, it should, because this spiral symbol is all over the place in Moana. It is the literal symbol of the heart of Te Fiti. It's on Moana's boat, and sure enough, right here on the turtle. Interestingly, the shell itself is also kind of a spiral shape, but fittingly, it's the wrong kind of spiral. Fibonacci sequence? <laughs> I don't think so. We're looking for more of a Koru spiral. That's an unfurling fern. <laughs> All right. You can also see further proof that the turtle was part of a greater trial after Moana passes the test. First of all, the moment the turtle returns to the ocean, the entire ocean like ripples, indicating the passing of the test. Then after the ocean comes to life and allows Moana to like walk around, it starts gifting her as many conches as she can carry, which is adorably few. But check out what appears beneath each conch she picks up. The spiral. Everything about this scene points to the heart of Tafiti. And in fact, the scene ends with the ocean gifting her the heart of Tafiti. Interestingly though, this is only Moana's first test, just to test her spirit. Later on, the ocean will test her again though, and this time to test her determination. But this is what brings us back to Moana's father, Chief Tui. We see throughout all of Moana's life growing up, she constantly tries to find different ways to make her way back to the water's edge. She is drawing pictures of boats. She is making canoes out of leaves. She's leaving formal events to go try and go towards the water. She even gets a canoe at one point with her right hand pig, Pua, who let's face it, should definitely have been the one to go on the journey with Moana and not hey, hey, but whatever, I'm over it. Point is, she tries and tries to make it to the water, but her dad is there over and over and over and over again to stop her. But again, I think this hails back to the idea that what he's really seeing in Moana is himself. I mean, certainly everyone else is seeing it. Grandma Tala says, You are your father's daughter. Her mom says, He's hard on you because- Because he doesn't get me. Because he was you. In fact, even Chief Dewey himself acknowledges it right here. Just as I did. And part of what he's referring to right there is when he tried to venture outside the reef himself, but in doing so, lost the life of his best friend. But what he doesn't realize about this statement is just how prophetic it actually is, and that Moana is indeed going to learn exactly the way he did how dangerous the reef is. But much like the turtle, her learning that lesson is not random. It is the second trial. And this trial, it seems, is where everyone before Moana, including her father, has failed. Because let's face it, the heart has been stolen for a thousand years, and almost the moment it's stolen, Tefiti turns into Teka. But seriously, do you think the ocean waited that long to finally get up off its butt and find someone who could voyage across itself to save the world? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. And besides that, Grandma Tala is telling legends at the start of the movie about how to fix the problem. So there must be some sort of known way or else where would the legends be coming from? In any case, the ocean's second task is to test how the chosen one will handle a deadly situation. Because really, no matter how you slice it, they're going to be heading into several deadly situations. So the test isn't, can you make it past the reef? Because the answer is no, you absolutely can't. You will not be allowed to. But after you don't, then what do you do? 
And for Chief Tui, the answer was pretty simple. Keep his entire tribe away from the reef at all costs forever. Stay safe, don't risk anything. And Moana very nearly makes the exact same decision. Like after she gets slammed back to shore, she resigns to go put her rock up on top of the mountain, even though it is painfully obvious she really wants her grandma to step in and like talk her out of it. Why aren't you trying to talk me out of it? But what really makes me think the act of trying to leave the reef is part of some absolute trial by the ocean is that the ocean obviously has a vested interest in the heart of Te Fiti being restored. And it could obviously just calm the waves if it wanted to and let you pass. And yet, it doesn't. And it does this because it knows the journey ahead is going to be incredibly difficult. And at some point, you are probably going to want to quit. And it cannot afford risking choosing someone who is not going to persevere. And indeed, that exact moment comes for Moana after the first time they try and sail past Te Ka. She wants to quit before shortly after realizing who she is in like truly epic fashion and getting the heart and going and doing it again. She perseveres. You can also see this earlier in the movie. Movie when Maui abandons her on his island and she starts swimming after him. She clearly has no chance of catching him and yet she tries anyway and that is where the ocean steps in. And I think Maui explains this phenomenon and the behavior of the ocean pretty perfectly right here. The ocean doesn't help you, you help yourself. And when you watch it, you almost think he's wrong because like obviously the ocean is helping out Moana a lot, but I think it's the other way around. He's not almost wrong, he's almost right. Really, it's more like the ocean doesn't help you until you help yourself. If anything, that's really almost Moana's entire character arc throughout the entire movie. Like you can't deny that she's determined the whole time, but there's a definite journey from- You will board my boat, sail across the sea and put it back. To- I will sail across the sea and restore the hearts of Te Fiti. She is no longer asking or expecting Maui to either help her or do it himself. She is now determined to do it on her own with her own abilities. And just as before, this is exactly what the ocean wanted, for her to show her determination and persevere. But fittingly, it's now, when she's all alone and determined, that she no longer needs the ocean's help. She can just do it by herself. She's ready. Moana passed the second test, but her dad gave up after the loss of his friend. Which to be fair is very understandable, but before that, I do think he passed the first test and was gifted the heart of Tafiti as well. So when he says, this is just a rock, it's because he's seen it before and wants nothing to do with it. He also obviously knows about the boats in the caves. I should have burned those boats a long time ago. And do you notice anything interesting about the shot of the boats from the flashback? None of those boats have the red spiral on them. Meaning that at some point, somebody went in that cave and adorned that canoe with the symbol of the Heart of Tafiti. And I think it was Chief Tui because he was chosen and got as far as picking out the canoe he was gonna take before abandoning his quest. Which I also kind of love because it means that Moana's canoe this is also her dad's canoe. This would all also explain why Grandma Tala seems to know so much about what Moana's going through with the situation, because if her dad went through it too, then Grandma Tala would have seen all of this unfold before. But there you go, guys. That is our theory for whether or not Moana's dad was in fact the chosen one before her. But what do you think? Do you agree? Was he chosen? Let us know all of your thoughts in the towel section down below. Guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Disney theories from us. If you want to see whether or not Maui created the Droon from Raya and the Last Dragon, I recommend you check out this video right over here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in another life, brother.